Good morning. I'm Peter Brophy. I'm VP of Digital Procurement and Supply Chain here at Edbury Daily. This morning I'm chatting to Matt Zaleski, CEO and I believe co-founder well, founder of yeah. Procurance. Morning, Matt. How are you? Good morning. Very good. Yourself? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Very well. Um, one of the reasons I'm talking today to Matt is that as specialist recruiters in the digital procurement and supply chain sector, we're very keen to understand, you know, developments in the market, the technologies and what people are using and really where the market's going. And I noticed Procurance, Matt, as you seem to be doing something different. Yeah, it was right. It seemed to be a product around collaboration, data and helping organizations work across teams. Yes. Correct. Yes. So we're we're trying to go, uh, let's say, to offer companies a broad spectrum of visibility rather than focusing on a very single small fields like a lot of companies doing right now. So they all, a lot of the startups you can see popping up, they specialize in a very, very narrow field. And of course they can be great in that field. Problem is you can't connect everything into this big picture where we want to go. Yeah. So uh, I was uh, actually just came up with analogy today is one of a say reasons why we went into into this holistic collaboration platform uh, there's a book by douglas adams gently holistic detective agency i'm not sure right. if you know it but the, the the main characters always say it's talking about interconnectedness of all things and, and that's the point here is that procurement is great but they're not alone in the world and if they start acting alone then they you lose a lot of insight and the the end result is suboptimal and that's the problem with a lot of the solutions right now is they're all focusing on their very small fields. Procurement software is just for procurement. Quality software is just for quality. Um, HSC or uh, personnel management software is just in this area and they, they don't connect to each other. And you lose on insights and you lose on that collaboration. So in fact, our collaboration is not just a basic collaboration between procurement and the suppliers, although one of the main points, uh, but we help companies collaborate between the different departments. So from engineering, quality management, procurement, operations, logistics, putting it all together and showing them that their actions have repercussions on other players within their own company as well. Okay, that, that's interesting, Matt, because although my background's uh, more HR than, say, procurement or operations, etc., I've seen that as an HR guy. You've got no idea what's going on in the rest of the business. I've got no idea what procurement's doing yet. And I, and I guess, because I had noticed your background's a little bit different for cause a lot of people in the sector are often tech, tech guys who set, set up a business, yeah? Yes, so I, I'm, I'm part tech, so I, I used to program as a kid and I, then I decided, okay, that, that's not for me as a career, so I pivoted to management and uh, I, I read management at the university um, and then I went into uh, procurement consulting um, and so that's how the idea of procurance came from, is basically I specialize in supplier management, supply chain risk management, and I was really frustrated at the end of the projects because we always left the customers with excel files because selecting any platform afterwards and and implementing that platform took such a long time yeah. that we were long gone before people started acting up on our suggestions yeah? and the idea was to have a a platform that is business friendly we of course uh, fulfill all the it requirements of the large corporations but our main target is the CPO and the team of the CPO. And right. we we try to, whenever possible, bypass the IT side. Yeah, because let's be honest, the moment you, you get IT on board, then you've got an automatic six months delay. Um, and we wanted to have a platform where you can start very quickly. Uh, and yep. then once the IT is ready, then you can do the APIs, the connections, and um, and, and so on. Yeah? The, the, in fact, the, the fastest we've ever done an implementation with real data was three days. We yep. were working with a procurement consultant who already did a lot of spent analysis. So they had a lot of stuff in Excel, so, um, and he knew their job. And uh, after the platform was set up, both of us sat down together for six or seven hours. 
uh, and it was ready with the whole list of suppliers, with the basic supplier master data, with the basic KPIs and the basic documents being uploaded, and you could just roll it out and go. Wow, wow. And it, again, you know, as a, as a person who's not in that that field, um, I always thought that, you know, the, like, you know, you know, lots of organizations, especially org large organizations, have their big ERP systems, which have got, mm -hmm. you know, recruitment, HR, you can do payroll, you can do finance. These, do these systems just make the, the transfer of data worse? Is, is, is your product set on top yeah, of so, that? So the, exactly. I mean, the, the point is the following. The moment you have a simple organization, so you've got, mm. let's say, one factory in one ERP system, it's all great because you've got this transparency and visibility. Now, the moment you have a company that has 100 business units and 20 different ERP systems, because that's that's a typical situation where company grows through acquisitions. Of course, the, the merging of the ERP systems, it takes years. And the faster you grow, the, the, the more behind IT becomes. Then at that point, you completely lose the overview of your uh, supplier network. You, you don't even know with whom you're working. So we we sit on top of the other of, of the other systems. So you've got the ERP systems. You might even have systems like Ariba, and then we sit on top because of the ease of use that we offer um, and and that overall transparency, and and the fact that you can have this hybrid work where. You can synchronize data with some systems, and when you've got other business units which are smaller and they're not yet ready with the with the IT part, and you can upload all the data using Excel and keep on having that insight with a minimum of work. I know. Having said that, the, usually the, the problems companies have is this is this commitment issue, because in the end you, you need to have some people who will take care of the system, and. Uh, in companies, especially in Europe and Germany, like our, our, our main markets, uh, is that they want to be perfect. So they keep on pushing the right, yep. rollout further and further, pu pushing, making the decisions because it's a, uh, we don't have the resources right now. We're not ready. Yeah? So it, it, it really it, it typically takes when we talk to companies who say, ah, we want to have, let's say, supplier management. And then they make a decision maybe after a year or two years of discussions because they, they're afraid of, of commitment. Whereas I always say, start, start, and then keep on doing things. Because if you think you're going to plan your way to 100% perfection, it will never happen. Yeah, so that's the point. It, it's a bit like getting fit, isn't it? Unless you go and start going for a 100-yard walk even, you're not going to get there, are you? You know. Absolutely. It's, it's a perfect... It's a perfect um, Similarly here, because they, they want to basically do the Iron Man run from yeah. the very beginning, because yeah, everybody yeah. has this vision, and they don't think, you know, you should start walking and then get better. It, it, it sounds a fascinating tool, Matt, and I can see as someone who's had experience in management and operations and, and business and, and tech that, you know, you, you've used your career and your insight to create a, a product that clearly works and, and there's something ec really excellent on top of what what's there, but as a, as a as a recruiter, I know how difficult procurement people can be mm -hmm. to sell to sometimes. It, it, how, how, you know, you 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 were a small business in in, mm -hmm. in, in Warsaw in Poland. You know, yes. how, how, how have you managed to get your message out? You know, you must have faced some real challenges launching the business. Yes, I mean, how to say it? The, the best thing I can tell to any anybody who wants to set up a startup is. If you have your timeline and budget multiplied by three, and yep. at the beginning it's it's nerve wracking because you see your I mean we didn't have any big investors so it's my my savings uh, life savings and a, a couple of my colleagues joined in and we just could see the money flowing out. Uh, so one thing definitely I've learned was patience and uh, in, in fact we had a lot of luck uh, because the, the our very first customer we, we went to a trade a procurement trade fair. Right. Uh, and our very, very first customer, Vestas, uh, they actually decided within a month. It was right. amazing. That never happened ever yeah. after. Uh, uh, but they're still with us. So after almost 10 years, uh, basically speaking, they're, they're still with us. Uh, other than that, uh, well, we, we don't really advertise. So we try to go through trade fairs. And yep. we try to win as many awards as as we we can, basically. Yeah. So we we won the top award in Poland. We're audited by the German Buyers Association. We're on 50 to watch list by Cement Matters in the US. 
Uh, we were finalists of procurement leaders uh, in the UK last year. Uh, this year, what about two two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, our customer Zulcher got the um, there's the Roland Berger Award. I sorry, I forgot the name. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, they also won won this one for basically showcasing um, our system together with the, the, the um, business warehouse dashboards and robotic process automation that you have basically full visibility on the purchase order level, uh, spend uh, contracts and so on that you can basically seamlessly click click through between the main SAPs and uh, um, and uh, our system uh, and pick up any 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 data that a buyer would want. It sounds like you had a lot of sex and a, a lot of success, and it sounds like um, you've really evolved the product as well. And I think when we were chatting, when we chatted, when we spoke before, you you, you mentioned you you evolved the product with your customers. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So I'm I'm in fact I'm better at product management than I'm sales. I have to admit this one. So we 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 think basically my approach is you, you sell the product through its quality. So if you have a great product, it will sell itself, basically speaking. And to have a great product, we, um, you know, I've got my background, so of course I understand things, but I cannot claim to be, to be the cleverest person on the earth. So we always involve our customers, especially in, in, in um, say new modules and new developments. Uh, so we did a lot, all the quality part, new, so new product introductions, basically um, we have a customer, uh, Agco Corporation, they do tractors, uh, agricultural yeah. machines. So Fend, Massey Ferguson, Challenger tractors. Uh, it's some of the brands that they have. And we co-developed this whole new product development and procurement and sorry, and quality management system basically from a uh, connection to the engineering, so wind chill with the drawings of new parts, uh, the whole uh, part approval timeline, uh, so product product development elements, uh, peep up uh, through to non-compliance reports and damage claims, so basically uh, all the cost, all the preparation for the rollout, all the cost of non-quality being in one chain uh, and that's a absolutely great amount of work that they've done also on on their side to to help us out to guide us where they want to 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 do things and we continuously develop this thing because you know in the end the greater the tool the more possibilities there are for mistakes or people do weird yeah, yeah. things in the system and so on so we continuously fight with with users or guide them how to do things uh, all, as much automation as possible so automatic assignment of people uh, automatic validation uh, checks yeah for example that how can you approve the dimensions if you have not uploaded the documentation where the dimensions are uh, even shown yeah so uh, those, yeah. Those, those kind of things it's, it's a lot of the small things yeah because in the end anybody can do a procurement system but the difficulty lies later on in the details and first of all how to force the good quality of data so yeah. we don't want to be yet another sap because most of the companies have a complete chaos in, in their erp system they have yeah. the same supplier 20 times in one erp they have the same suppliers in 20 different erps with 20 different ids uh, and they have completely no no transparency we try to bring it all together uh, and we try to guide people what are the next steps what should you do please remember this please remember that with automatic alerts uh, uh, those kind of things and then bringing together because that's that's where we come again into this interconnectedness okay if you have risk management for example yeah so we of course integrate with with all the big providers ecovadas risk methods sphera and so on and now of course you can take those services and use them standalone what typically companies do but then you lose out on the um, on the insights yeah? because if you've got let's say risk events from from sphera you usually either need to give access to everybody in the company which is of course a lot of work because people come and go in a company so instead of having one man one system to manage you have a, a couple of systems to, to even manage the users um then um they all get the same information uh, so in our case we take out the the risk we check out who's responsible for the relevant suppliers or the relevant topic because if it's a sustainability risk then usually there's a dedicated sustainability team and we can route it to that team uh, and then we can 
simplify the the job of uh, of, of the people saying maybe okay that risk is there but maybe it's not relevant i mean if it's an office supply company we can just record that risk close it automatically but if it's a strategic supplier with past risk problems then we can already escalate it higher up automatically and those external applications don't know which suppliers are strategic they don't know how many business units the supplier supplies they don't know the past history if there was you know problems with that supplier we have that information so we can help act on that information directly and guide people in the right place i, I mean that's fascinating matt I, I i i didn't i mean i know some procurement people sometimes when they're sourcing technology you know that it's, it's not that they go for the safe option but they, mm -hmm. they'll go for the well-known brands because i think there's sometimes a concern that a smaller so piece of software can't handle yeah. the complexity or the the you know, Either processes or it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. and your your system, it, although it's sim simple, if, if you don't, it, it yeah. clearly can handle complexity as well. Yeah. We do I mean that's why I mean we spent all of our all of our money on product development rather than marketing. Uh, that's <laughs> you know, it's got pros and cons, yeah. So we're not as well known, uh, but we do. I mean, we, we pretty much put about eighty five percent of our turnover into product development. Wow. That's that's high. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we do about two and a half thousand tickets per year. We, ticket can be just one field or one additional page on 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 that level. Uh, and uh, and we always, I mean, the difference between us and the and the bigger companies, of course, okay, we're, we're we're smaller, so the risk might be higher. Although yep. I, I still argue with that because you know we don't, for example, we don't have any debt, so we're as risk-free as possible on, on on our side. But the benefit of us is that you get the flexibility, and if you get one of the big players like I don't know Ariba, Jagger, Cooper, and so on, you're pretty much stuck with what they offer. I mean, the the likelihood of when any single company influencing the product development is down to zero. Uh, in our case, we're open to that because that, that's how we grow and that's where we get our our financing from, from, from our customers. And it's our job to think about that future complexity and if a customer want, comes in yeah. and says, I want ABC, so I always say we don't do what the customers want, we do what we think the customers will need in the future. Yeah, yeah. we always yeah. plan ahead and, and so on. And we, we never do anything customer specific so if a customer comes with us we have a new problem to solve it's our job to think how can we apply the same principle to all of our other customers and where could the differences be because yeah. i mean the good thing about the business of course everybody thinks they're unique but they're not i mean that's the problem that's the point the the, the content might be unique the questions you ask because they're industry specific but the processes are pretty much the same i mean i've in my career, I've done projects from medical devices in Germany to a mining company in Brazil. I mean, it's completely different worlds, but it is the same approach. Yeah, you, you might ask different questions, but that's for the, our customers to to decide. So we we can we are a sparring partner, but we're not a consulting company. So we don't give them contents, but we give them software that can be adjusted to their own needs. And if they it cannot be adjusted out of the box then we can easily add new developments or, or, or change things. Yeah? So we always, you know, we, we, we start with a small product, like this minimum viable product with one customer, and then we show it to other customers. That's great, but we'd like to add this and this uh, on top. Yeah. So like supplier onboarding, we've started with a simple questionnaire. Then came another customer saying, uh, but questions are not enough. We need the master data. We need the questions. We need the... Uh, uh required documents uh we need assessments then came another customer saying that your approval process was too simple we need to have a multi-step workflows and in fact parallel workflows because there's one set let's say the category manager decides on uh, whether this the company is suitable in the first place what they yep. offer but then you've got the IT department who look at the uh, IT security for some of the companies, let's say those that are offering data management services and so on. Uh, and then you've got other departments and so on. All of them have to have a say before you can release that supplier into your supplier pool. Uh, and then came another customer who said, well, it's even more complicated because we look at spend and say if it's a low 
let's say, theoretically low spend company, then the local category manager can decide. Uh, if it's a high spend company, then a global category manager should decide. Yeah? So you've got this, instead of a workflow, in, in fact, have decision trees. Yeah, But yep. step by step, we enlarge and enlarge the possibilities that the customers have. Thanks, thanks, Matt. I mean, this is a really fascinating insight. So you, you, you provide the, both the capability and the expertise you've got from your career with the flexibility of technology and by the sounds of a very customer centric approach. It, it, and OK, there's that risk element that many yeah. procurement people see because you're a small business. But actually, to my mind, that's better than being a company overloaded by VC funding that's overvalued the, the organization. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's our approach, and one of the reasons why we win against uh, the big brands is, is that basically, you know, we can come in and talk to the CPO at an eye level because we we know what they come through, we we've seen all the complexities and so on. So we we try. I mean, I still have my consultant hat on as well, and I can say to customers, okay, this is okay, but that's not going to work, or at least for other customers, it not work. You should do this, uh, this, and this, uh, and um, but that's part of the exciting bits about the procurement world. There's still a lot of things to, to, be, de to be developed, new things coming up. Um, so you're not stuck in the rut just doing all the same stuff. Uh, but a lot of things are, are happening right now. Matt, thank you very much for your time today. I think that's some wonderful insight to yourself and the organization. I wish you great luck for the future. And, and thanks for taking the time with me today. Thank you.